so that you won't be asleep. <laughs> because I know this topic is a bit relatively new and it's going to be boring. So I'll try my best. So as you've already uh, introduced, my name is Samson. I belong to the Institute of Applied Sciences at the University of the South Pacific. Uh, before I go any further, I think our team also send their regards to Professor Fila. I think they've been working with you in the past, so they, they know you a bit. So our Institute of Applied Science has five different units and uh, is looked after by a director, Dr. Johan Ponaipen from the Mauritius. It was established way back in 1970, uh, 1977, a number of uh, 65 staffs, and provides uh, professional scientific consultancy services to its 12 member countries. So I would uh, introduce our team before I will go on to the actual uh, presentation. So our team, our unit is called the Pacific Natural Product Research Center, based at the uh, Laudala campus in Suva. It was established back in 2001, and uh, we have 12 staffs with a manageress who is also from the Solomon Islands. And our main function or objective within the strategic research plan for the institute is the investigation of biochemical properties of marine and terrestrial organisms, as well as bacteria for potential pharmaceutical, cosmetic, and agrochemical uses. So in short, it's bioprospecting. So our work is mainly to do with bioprospecting, which is the sets for useful biological materials from uh, organisms, such as uh, soft corals. These are mostly marine invertebrates, as well as uh, plants. And the, my topic for today is about microbes. So it's relatively new. Microbes, as you all know, it has, or probably, I assume you all know, it has so many, it plays a lot of important role in our life apart from assisting to digest food in our stomach, as well as decompose organic matter into smaller, useful components. So yes, we conduct bioprospecting at our center, which is mostly used for pharmaceutical, agrochemical, and cosmetic uh, uses. Briefly, 50% of Western medicines are derived from natural sources. For example, aspirin was originally isolated from a meadowsweet plant. Penicillin, one of the most famous antibiotic, isolated from a fungi, mold, and quinine. For those of us who have malaria infection in our countries, you may remember this. And the drug industry is a very lucrative business or industry, and it is estimated up by 2016, which we are already two years past, the sales should be about $800 billion. Although it's very lucrative industry, the process to just produce a commercially available drug or medicine takes about 15, 20 years. You can correct me on that later. And even the cost of doing these studies or research can go up to $800 million. And maybe because of this, you will look on the graph on the bottom left, the number of new molecular entities from natural products, not from uh, uh, mammals, has reduced. Those that are approved by the uh, Food and Drug uh, Authority in the States. And uh, it's like gambling. One in 10,000 chances for you to discover a useful drug. So for our team, basically, we, as I've said, we conduct bioprospecting and drug discovery. At in, and it involves all of these uh, processes, such as information gathering, and then you have to collect a permit from the 12 member countries within the Pacific region who are members of USP. Sometimes it's very difficult. And then you start your field collection, pre-identification of these organisms, after you collect these organisms, you go back to the lab, you start the bioextraction, and then you do bioactivity testing. So we have several in-house pathogens. So pathogens in this sense means the microbes that causes infection. So these are the bad guys. Then you do fractionation, purification, and structural elucidation. Based on interesting results, you can conduct 
the identification of that organism, you do redo uh, collection, and then you do structure activity relationship. All of this that you see in this slide is in the commercialization phase. We don't do that at our center. We only do until number seven on this slide. So what do we do? We go out to the field, we dive into the beautiful ocean, and we collect marine invertebrates. And uh, two types of samples we usually collect. One are macro samples, which refer to the invertebrates. And the second one are micro samples, which refer to the symbionts, or the samples that we use to isolate microbes upon our return to our laboratory. Apart from sampling, we also conduct, as I've uh, mentioned, bioactivity studies. We also do biodiversity assessments, including inventories, and determining the conservation status and health of those reefs. We also do chemodiversity of these various marine organisms and chemotaxonomy. So still, a bit of introduction of our institute. Although we have just 12 staffs, we have so many projects happening in our, in, uh, in our center. So the first one we currently have, uh, in collaboration with Georgia Institute of Technology, uh, Scripps Institution of Oceanography of the University of California, and our team. So this is a project funded by the National Institute of Health in the States. We also just recently concluded the access and benefits sharing with the Fiji government, which is again on the capacity for bioprospecting in Fiji. And both of these projects are based on marine organisms. Then recently, uh, thanks to Professor Jito, we also got our bioprospecting project funded by USP, which now focuses on both marine and terrestrial organisms. And very recently, we had our blue carbon restoration project which to our understanding and knowledge is the first of its kind in the Pacific that combines carbon sequestration, ocean acidification monitoring, and mangrove replanting. And finally, we are also establishing microbial fuel cell studies and microbial electrolysis cells, which is from microbes, which include production of energy and bioremediation of wastewater. So under these projects, we've established and put it online, the first ever bioprospecting database in the whole Pacific, if I am correct. We've also bought a lot of expensive equipments under the ABS project, thanks to the Fiji government. We've helped them to draft their policy, as well as established a lot of MOUs, collaborations, and a few number of permits. We've also established at our center a library of more than 5,000 microbial strains, some crude extracts, and some compounds that have bioactivity for TB, for cancer, for neuroimmuno-oncology, for malaria, and so forth. And to uh, put that home, from 2006 to 2010, from just a single Fijian red alga, Calofica serratus, our team in the States isolated 32 novel compounds which has activity for anti-cancer and anti-tuberculosis. So what is the importance of doing drug research in the Pacific? I think our aim is to try and find or to fight against life-threatening diseases. For example, within a span of three months, in December 2016 to Feb 2017, at the biggest hospital in Suva, there were 12 reported deaths of newborn babies by Acinetobacter baumani, because this particular strain has antibiotic resistant. So they are currently, at this point of time, there are no treatment for this particular pathogen. And again, in March of this year, there was an outbreak and few confirmed deaths of another strain, infection of, by another strain. So you can see that there is a rise in antibiotic resistance as well, globally. And it is important that we identify potential novel natural products, not only from plants, marine invertebrates, as well as from bacteria or microbes. And we believe that through this kind of drug research projects, we can strengthen and improve existing traditional remedies. 
and to follow suit with PIDF. PIDF, we are also encouraging and promoting the blue economy, Pacific narrative. So, basically this is our microbial uh, process in the lab. First of all, we go out sampling, we collect the samples, come back to the lab, we isolate them, we purify them, and sometimes we extract the DNA and then send them overseas for sequencing. Uh, from here, we go to seeding, from seeding, we go to preservation in 50% glycerol, and keep them in minus 80 degrees Celsius. After a few days, we revive them just to make sure that they are revivable. Then we seed them again, step up, extract, and do bioactivity assay. In our in-house uh, bioactivity screening, we have several pathogens. One for the antibacterial test, we have the vancomycin-resistant Enterococcus fissum, rifampicin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, and the wild type and the methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, and the antibiotic, a multidrug-resistant bacillus strain, CNY977, and then a multidrug-resistant E. coli. We also have two types of antifungal test, the amphotericin-resistant Candida albicus and its wild type. We also send our samples overseas for malaria, dengue, cancer, and TB assays. And currently, we are trying to establish anti-dengue, anti-cavity, and bacteriophage therapy in our lab. So for the chemistry work, uh, this is the process. Sometimes we skip LH20 from vacuum liquid chromatography to TLC and then combiflas, HPLC. Once you receive this kind of almost semi, or let's say pure compound, we send them overseas to our US collaborators for NMR analysis. So, so why a microbe? For microbe, they have, as I've mentioned, they have so many functions. And uh, some of their functions I have mentioned. And now we've tried to exploit microbes with the symbiotic relationship that they have with the marine invertebrates. We try to exploit that relationship. Because I think most, there are studies that many of the invertebrates rely on the bacterial partners, co-inhabitants, for protection. And according to literature, the FDA approved natural product of new molecular entities, microbial origin, with microbial origin, it is made up of 30% of the new FDA-approved uh, NME. And of this, 90% of the antibiotics are from microbes. And so, you can tell microbes have a very important role in our fight against global antibiotic resistance. So one of the studies that we did in our lab was the um, isolation of streptomyces from samples collected in the Solomons. And it has activity against um, these pathogens, methylis, the Staphylococcus aureus and the multidrug resistant E. coli. Another study we did in our lab is uh, a red pigmented bacteria. So th this bacteria is purplish in color, reddish. And we've uh, isolated a already known compound. It is active against the bacillus strain CNY 977. Uh, the other study we did in our lab, also, we collected uh, spans from the Solomons. We collected it back to the lab. We isolate the bacteria. We grow it following the same process I've highlighted, and it has activity against another multi-drug resistant bacillus, and we've produced uh, two compounds that are already known, but this is the first time that one of these compounds is known to have bioactivity. So we are writing a paper on that for publication. And this one is a Fijian sea hair, Dolabella auricularia. Uh, it is a... Uh, local delicacy in Fiji for the native Fijians. There has been a lot of work done on that particular uh, sea hair across the globe, particularly in Japan, but there has been no studies. Little is published on the microbial inhabitants that live on this particular Fijian sea hair. So what we did is we isolated about 57 strains of bacteria, and then we selected nine that are active, and we selected one for uh, our work. 
So, so far this one we've sent the samples over for LCMS MS analysis in Japan. How many minutes do I have? No more? Zero. Oh. So, okay, the last, second to the last, sorry. Maybe they don't need to ask me question then. So, just sorry, last one. And then uh, for the microbial, as well as for current production, this is my work I published back in 2013. I was, a, I was a PhD student at the time. So, we isolated this from a lot of spill in Japan. We grew them in this. We isolate this in gel and gum. It looks like this under ACM, and it produces current which is about 0 0.07 volt. It's the highest in the globe at this point of time. So, but then, so we are also gonna establish that at USP. And then our final work now is on efficacy of bacteriophage, so it's, it's virus that you can collect from sewage or from the environmental sources, you isolate it, and it has specific target for certain pathogens. So you can use it as an alternative using instead of natural products. So for citation purposes, I've put that. And finally, I'd like to thank my university, my team over there, the UNDP, the Fiji government, ICBG team, as well as UPF. Thanks for paying for some of our air to come and participate. Vinaka, Maururu, thank you. <laughs>